Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my opinions on the rare coin market. And we're going to be talking about some Mercury Dimes that we just got in from our friend named Fernando. But let's get this video started. Okay, so... I wanted to talk about the coin market because I feel like there's something to get off my chest. Um, I feel like right now we're falling off the gray sheet standard. And we have been for like since the pandemic. And basically what that means is that coins we used to think that we can get a gray sheet or a little bit above gray sheet. Um, most of those have really transferred um, to almost full retail um, and even higher than that. And so why, why am I saying this? And then I have another point to add as well. Um, I'm saying all this because I feel like um, we had an experience this weekend where we, were, we took a large sum of money to the show. We made a video about it Monday and there wasn't really anything to buy. And my question and my thought process was, where's the cheapest place to buy coins? The cheapest place to buy coins is at a show, right? And so, when you actually end up selling coins, and there's big people that end up selling coins, they sell them in two different places. They either uh, sell them online on their website, or they go to auction with some coins. And I'm guessing people are starting to catch on to this fact that when you buy low at shows and you sell them high online, after a while, the, the, the supply at the coin shows are gonna be a, a little bit lackluster. And why is that? Is because, I, I think since the pandemic, there's been a major kind of, uh, it's been a major switch, right? So everybody was really accustomed to going to shows. Even the local shows had a lot of great stuff. The big shows had even greater stuff. And ever since the pandemic happened, I think that a lot of coin dealers said, hey, we need to get online. We need to get our online presence up. How are we going to maintain our business through uh, this, this trial period of, uh, of everything that was going on? And then the people that really came out on top was the auction houses. I mean, we're, we're seeing many record level uh, breaking uh, sold comps on a lot of rare coins. And that just gets me thinking. It's like, um, is everybody else starting to catch on and understand that um, coin shows and what they offer in terms of coinage aren't what they used to be? And are people willing to pay for them more online? And so... It's just my, it was just my thought today, and um, what we actually do every single month, me and Casey, is that we buy coins that we like, that we feel like could go up in value, um, and we keep them for a long period of time. And the reason we do that is because I can't find stuff like that anymore. I can't find, and when I do find it, it's it takes me many hours to keep looking and searching, and being readily available for someone when someone offers it to me. Um, so there's a lot of things being said, but what I would say to you, and um, I'm not a financial advisor myself, but I, what I would say to you is that hold on to the coins that you really like and that are really going to demand the value. Um, just because when there's a time to sell it, um, you'll be ready for it. And I don't know where uh, everything lays in terms of supply and demand, but even talking to some dealers, they're like, shows just haven't been what they used to be. And like I said, a major part of that is, is that giant transfer from shows to online. And so I would like to know your thoughts about your opinion on, on, on shows near you. Do they have a lot of nice coins? Are they willing to sell them at a reasonable price? I want to know your thoughts. Um, and the reason why I kind of talked about it in this video is because we were talking to Christy and Blake over at Royal Coins when we were filming after a podcast. And she's like, yeah, we were at the show and there's a lot of people that just came up to us and said, there's just nothing here. We can't find anything um, worth reselling, worth uh, for our clients. And so uh, just gonna let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Uh, is it, am I just fooling myself or am I uh, creating kind of a valid point here? Where have most of your coin purchases have been? Have they been at shows or have they been online? Where have you seen most of the quality coins? Have you seen them at shows? Or have you seen them online? Um, and that's kind of the reason why we created our, our YouTube channel and created our coin website 
is so we can find coins, make them readily available for you at a little bit more of a premium. And so it's a lot of you that want really nice coins now, you're not going to want to fly to Baltimore. You're not going to want to fly to Long Beach. You're not going to have maybe not have the funds or not have the time to do it. Um, so uh, just consider that. And we're going to be talking a little bit about some Mercury Dimes that we got in, like I said, and show those off for you. But uh, yeah, let's cut to that part of the video. Thank you, Fernando, for these great Mercury Dimes. But let's start unpacking. Wow, so a lot of great coins. Let's start breaking them down little by little and show you guys what we got. Alrighty guys, just uh, opened up that box. Wanted to show you everything. A lot of Mercury Dimes here today. Let me give you a little bit of backstory on these Mercury Dimes. So, like I was talking to you guys about earlier, Fernando sent us another great group of coins. If you guys don't know who Fernando is, he sent us a lot of Franklin half dollars, a lot of Kennedy half dollars, all really nicely, you know, uh, PQ coins. Blast white and beautiful, just like these. Uh, very fortunate enough to be able to work with him and uh, offer a few coins to you guys over the weekend. Uh, just to tell you guys a little bit about Mercury Dimes, the better dates you should be looking out for when you're looking through these series is uh, the 1916D, the 1921P, 1921D, and the 1945, but you need that in full bands. Those are the ones that I normally look out for at shows. There's a few other dates uh, here and there, but that's something that you guys should really think about when trying to work on the uh, the series. There's a guy that talked to us about buying the best first just because over the long period uh, you're going to be paying a lot more later on. So let's talk a little about, about the history of uh, the Mercury Dime. This Mercury Dime was made by uh, Ada Faye Weinman. You can actually see his maker's mark to the right of her head. And uh, you know a little bit of backstory about the coin. The Treasury Department wanted to Vote on the best designs for uh, the dime, the quarter, and the half. The Barber series was uh, coming to a close, and they needed uh, you know something new and fresh, and so this is what they made. This is uh, being depicted here as Lady Liberty, and she's wearing a cap, and the cap basically um, was to depict uh, liberty of thought. So that's that's basically what the West was. We just were trying to revolutionize people's rights, and uh, I don't know make something that was uh, a lot better than communism and socialism and everything else that was going on at the time that's still kind of prevalent today but very nice design let's show you guys a few of these mercury dimes and show you a few coins that we've been picking up these past few days so here is a nice 1909 uh, VDB uh, just MS 63 red brown I think it's a nice coin overall you know it's just a middle of the road kind of better date I like picking up stuff like this just because I enjoyed the luster on it. It's a few a little spots on the reverse, which kind of takes away from its grade, but it's still a pretty nice example. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier about the better dates. This one's a 1945D. It's not a better date, but like I said, in 45 full bands, um, you're going to be seeing a lot of money. I think ones in 65 full bands go for like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, something like that. The luster on this one's pretty strong. You're going to see that a lot with, you know, the better grades, you know, 65, 66. And that's kind of where most of these coins land when we're talking about them. Um, Fernando, like I said, did a really good job. He even sent us a few in old, old green holders and rattler holders, just like this one. Kind of hard to show the detail off um, on the video. We're going to have some better photos on the website, AcousticCollectibles.com. If you guys are missing a slot in your Mercury Dime set, we have a lot of common date sets or common date uh, dates here today, and we want to show you guys a few of them. And what I was talking about earlier was the rattler holder. We have a few of these as well. Just a little bit of piece of numismatic history from PCGS, and uh, yeah, I think these are all really nice. Don't want to spend too much time on all these just because it's kind of redundant. There's a lot of uh, the same type of design, different.
different dates, like I said, that you might need. We picked this coin up from Blake today. This is uh, 1891 uh, Washington, I'm sorry, seated quarter. Um, it, I liked it because it had a little bit of rim toning. Still has some luster on the coin as well. You can see that cartwheel. And, you know, I like color on coins like this. Just harder to find. Nice blast white reverse. And uh, you can't go wrong with that. He picked this up for us at the Grapevine Show Day 2. We didn't end up going because we didn't find too much, but very thankful for that. But thank you guys for letting me talk a little bit about the history of the coins. I'll also show you a few and uh, talk to you about what we thought about the market. Let's uh, cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. It would mean a lot to me um, just because we want to reach more people, get them excited about the hobby, and maybe show them some nice coins as well. Comment your thoughts, like I said earlier, about just everything that you see in the marketplace. Uh, you know, where you're buying coins, where you're seeing most of the nice coins being uh, sold at. And subscribe if you're new. We would uh, really be honored to have you a part of the Kusha Collectibles squad. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, just wanted to give you guys a food for thought that I've been thinking about for the past few minutes and talk to you about it. There's two types of people in this world. There's people that value and chase money or they value and chase time. And what does that really mean, right? Um, so what I, was, what I really learned is that if you value time, money will always be there. Money will, there will always be plenty of money. There will always be plenty of opportunities because you're looking to utilize your time the most. And if you're a coin dealer, I talked a little bit on my Instagram tonight about how uh, you can utilize your time a little bit more. You know, buy coin shows, sell online. Sometimes that's going to reap a better reward. Use, uh, you know, get into collectors, uh, you know, minds. Think, make, make yourself think about them and what they want. Um, and find coins that you can't live without. And sometimes that requires time. Sometimes that requires a little bit more of you. But at the end of the day, it means a lot more. And what does that mean? So we make a 15-minute video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's great. We have coins that we upload on our website. We post daily about stuff. That doesn't take up too much time. That makes me value time more. Um, there's people that I see every single day on Instagram or Facebook. They're posting 20, 25 coins two or three sell maybe um, and it ends up being a big time waster I was the one that experienced that and that is why I wanted to transfer uh, you know transfer my time over to something like YouTube and so uh, I don't say any of this to like be braggadocious but over like the past what six or seven hours we had like seven or eight nine something like that orders and that was just and I was just having a good time doing something I enjoyed and uh, so I guess I'm going to leave you with this and it's kind of all over the place but if you value time like I said money will always be there because you're constantly thinking of better ways to value your time make it better for you utilize it but if you value money there will never be enough you will never have enough if you value money you will never have enough you'll spend all of your time thinking about it all of your time consumed with it and you won't spend your time thinking about how to value your time because that's the most important commodity. There's a person that can make a million dollars a day. There's a person that can make $10 a day. It's all about how they value their time. Thank you guys for listening.